Congratulations, that's an incredible story. Uh, let me turn now to the um, final panelist uh, before we go to the audience. Um, Rebecca Rubin uh, focused on a different aspect, not food security, but national security. Uh, and Rebecca, can you give us a sense of the importance of, uh, of these kinds of topics and building in uh, adaptation and, and resilience in the national security domain? Sure, I mean, I think there's a tremendous and very intrinsic linkage between national security and national security. When you start to think about the nexus between something as basic as the Defense Department, which we kind of take for granted at this point, um, and, the, and the fight that's on, a lot of it's over scarce resources and so forth, and a, a lot of what you need is to start thinking along the ecosystem services pathways. Well, how do you do that? You do that you know, within our own United States, you do that with conservation buffers, you do that with ecological services, you do that with the delivery of those services through soft infrastructure like wetlands and so forth and not hard infrastructure, which is the more traditional pathway. So I think that one of the most significant kind of linkages we need to be making both nationally and internationally is to help people understand not just the obvious pieces, uh, water security and so forth, but also some of the more nuanced pieces about how our security is enhanced through the delivery of the ecological services. How do you do that? I think a big part of it is you sort of talk about it as if it's normal. I think one of the issues that we all confront is the sense that you know, people you talk to aren't ready to hear about climate change. I don't think we have time to worry about that anymore. I think the reality is you have to talk about it and you have to talk about it as if it's the most natural thing in the world to be talking about it. And I think the more you do that, the more change you'll see. So I'll give you a direct correlation with your question then, which is when we first started to talk with the Defense Department about climate change, we got a little bit of this sort of pat on the head, isn't that cute? <laughs> your company is a company of tree huggers. And, I mean, that's factually correct, but the reality, <laughs> is, the reality is, you know, um, that the, the, the climate security implications are enormous, again, both nationally and internationally. And so when we were able to slowly but passionately advance the dialogue with the Defense Department, boy, did they get it, and boy, did they catch on, and boy, are they now among the real climate leaders in this debate. And you want to talk about the world's single largest market, that would be the Defense Department, right? And from there, almost every other vendor or supplier has some hook in there someplace, everyone from Coca-Cola to Calgon. So uh, to wrap this up, I, I just think that we need to move the ball forward, move the needle forward by talking about this in terms that really embrace both the national security angle, yes, but seeing it through the natural security angle. Thanks. Super. Thank you, Rebecca, and thanks to the whole panel. Uh, really fantastic start to the discussion. I want to transition now and take some questions from the 